Hello and welcome back to RC Model Reviews. Just a quick video today. I mentioned in my weekly news about these cheap video FPV systems from RC Timer I saw them at. And so I ordered a couple and I got the 127 degrees and the 160 degree field of view and they came in a box. But I'm not going to unbox it on screen because this is what it actually looks like. And this is basically what you get for your money. And what do you get? Well, you get one of these antennas, of course, which do work, but a cloverleaf uh, would be better. It's an SMA antenna, not an RP SMA. So that's the kind of antennas and connectors that the Fat Shark immersion systems use. Mostly the Chinese systems in the past have used the RP SMA, where the little pin is actually in the transmitter, not in the antenna itself. So something to bear in mind. I didn't see an RP SMA option uh, when I bought purchased this. There may be one. So obviously we've got some instructions and these will be written in very, very small writing, which means for old people like me, they're useless. You get some leads. And what have we got in here? We've got a JST connector, which will go after your battery. We've got a connector that goes into the side of the video transmitter board and another connector here that goes into your camera and is there one for the balance port? I thought I saw somewhere that had one for the balance port but no it doesn't seem to. It's got a couple of JSTs. Let's undo the cable tie off out of shot because uh, that's too hard to do it on shot. Maybe there's two sets of cables here. I don't know. No. Ooh. So this becomes like an extension JST. So this sort of taps into your JST feed and the wires are quite long. It's going to be a bit messy if you're trying to put them in a small model. Yeah, really long. <laughs> if you've got a small model, then this may be um, require a bit of pruning. However, if you've got a small model, then this is actually going to be pretty good because these are fairly small. This is very similar to the little, well, it's the LT200, which is pretty much a version of the little camera that I had, or the little video transmitter I suggested for the um, low cost drone racer, low cost mini quad. The nice thing about this one is it has a five volt output. The normal, like the little, uh, whatever, I forget the number of it, but the other one doesn't have a 5 volt output for the camera. This is a 5 volt camera. So this should work out pretty well. It's a very small camera. Let's get some scales out and weigh these things. Oh no, the batteries in my scales have gone flat. And actually they're quite yucky. They're about, about to leak horrible, cheap zinc carbon batteries. Have to see if I've got some alkalines here I can throw in there. Hmm. Okay, let's take a look at the individual bits. The video transmitter. Now, it doesn't come with any heat shrink. That's quite unusual. All the other video transmitters, these little 200 milliwatt ones, are covered in heat shrink to protect the components from being accidentally short-circuited and also to stop them being knocked off the board because, yeah, these surface mount components, if you give them a bit of a knock, sometimes they will come loose. Uh, so, mm, I would recommend that you put your own heat shrink on it to avoid that situation or maybe some, some of that black liquid tape or something just to give a bit of protection from electrical and physical insult. It's got this connection on the side there which goes off to your video transmitter. Interesting thing as we can see from the label is we have a 5 volt output which is great. It means if you've got a 5 volt camera this will provide the filtering and the regulation for that camera. That's really neat. That's a handy feature on its own because the other little 200 milliwatt transmitters don't generally offer that. So that's a bonus feature. Um, what else have we got? As I mentioned it is an SMA connector so there's no pin on the transmitter. The pin is actually on the antenna. Very very important to realize that if you've already got RPSMA antennas and you buy this and you want to put those clover leaves on there, not going to fit without an adapter. So yeah, bear that in mind. Now, the other thing is that this actually has a little button for programming. None of those crappy little dip switches, which inevitably you can't read the pamphlet because you can't tell from the instructions which whether the switch is up or down based on the horrible little diagrams they use. So this has a little switch, a switch on the side you can press and little LEDs along the bottom here to tell you the band and channel currently selected. What a very good idea. Another, this is too, looking like it's a really good little transmitter if it performs the way it should. But certainly from the point of view of design, it's been very nicely done. Now, that little label on there, yeah, nothing else to see here. We'll move along. So that's the transmitter. Moving along to the camera. There it is. It's actually quite small, isn't it? Look, there's the size of my thumb and there's the, the camera. And again, this has actually got a really cool feature. It's got a little switch here. You can switch between NTSC and PAL. So depending on what part of the world you live in, you can change your video standard being used by the camera. And if you are in America or other countries that use NTSC, give PAL a try because it's actually got more vertical resolution than NTSC. The frame rate's a little slow, but we're talking 50 instead of 60, so it's not, you're not going to notice it. But that extra vertical resolution can be useful, and they claim this is a 700 TV line camera, but it only has a CMOS sensor, so I don't expect to get the same sort of performance we get out of the PZ0204 or whatever they are, um, you know, the 
the default board camera, the 600 TV line Sony CCD cameras, but we'll see how this one works out. I mean, it's very small, it's quite light, and as I say, when I get some batteries for my scales, I'll measure the weight. The lens is a, uh, they say, 127 degree field of view, which works out to be about a, a 2.6 millimeter, so it's a little bit longer than the 2.8 millimeter we usually use for mini quads, but it is shorter than a 3.6 millimeter, which means you're not going to get quite the same field of view as you get with the 2.8, but you'll get an awful lot more than 3.6, so it's probably a good compromise. Now, I did get a 160 degree field of view lens as well, or transmitter, video camera, and I think that's going to be pretty useless. That's way too wide. That's like fisheye stuff. So, but I'll try it out and see. I'll do a comparison between the two so you know which one to choose. So there you go. Um, yeah, the... Uh, the instructions, as I say, reasonably concise and clear, actually. I'm quite happy with them. It's a, a bit of a change sometimes. It has, even has a colour picture. For those of you who like coloured pictures, that's marvellous. Someone must have played for hours with the crayons colouring that in. So please appreciate it. So what we'll do now is we're going to take this away and I'm going to put it in something. Now I could put it in a mini quad, but I might just throw it in the AXN and then drive for about a million miles till I get well beyond the reach of certain groups and give that a bit of a fly. We'll see what happens. So coming up shortly on this video, in fact next, is the flight test. Okay, I decided not to go with the AXN because uh, it's too far to drive. So what I've done is I've taken my MXP230 and I've added the new camera and video transmitter to the front here. I've still got the old video transmitter and the old camera you can see in there. So these two are going to be operating in, in parallel. They're going to be both operating at the same time. I'm using the standard rubber ducky antenna on here because that's the way it comes and that's the way I test it. So I don't expect good performance against dropouts and things. Really this is going to be a test of the camera as much as anything because this little camera um, is supposed to be nearly the same as a 2.8mm and we're going to see how it handles the changes in light and different conditions we've got here today. And the sun's quite low in the horizon today. It's, uh, it is autumn here, so fall as they call it in America and it's a really warm day so I'm quite happy. And over here I've got my recording set up because I'm going to record both streams. I'm going to record the stream that I'm watching from my original camera and I'm going to record the stream that comes from the 200 milliwatt 30 or 25 dollar setup. So I've got one DVR there and one DVR here. And again I'm using the standard rubber ducky antenna on each end in this case because we're not looking at the performance of the antennas, we're looking at the camera. And I'm just using one antenna, circularly polarized. It'll be, uh, not, this, this screen has diversity but I'm not using it so we'll just be comparing apples with apples just looking at the cameras so now let's do some flying
Hi there, sorry I don't have my mic with me today, so we're just using the camera mic, but that actually, I was quite impressed with that. I don't know what you think after looking at the footage, but of course it's not a $30 or $40 camera. The whole thing is only $26 or something, including shipping, so <laughs> um, that's a 200 milliwatt transmitter, and the they call it a 700 TV line uh, camera, but I don't know, it doesn't seem to have that much resolution to me. It's, uh, the light handling is much better than I would have expected for a cheap CMOS camera and it just seems to work pretty well. I'd say if you don't have much money then hey, you know, 30, well, under 30 bucks for an FPV solution, it's pretty damn good. So, yep, I'd have to give this one a thumbs up, even if you just buy it for the little transmitter because as I say that transmitter's got a regulated 5 volt output so it's really handy if you want to run a 5 volt camera and you don't have to worry about filtering. And because it has a wide input range, up to six cells I think, it means you can just fit that camera, uh, sorry, that video transmitter and a 5 volt camera to anything you like and just plug and play with the battery voltages without having to worry about it. So there you go, it worked very well. Now I did see one of these on the weekend, which was on another quadcopter and it had really bad jello. There was vibration in the quad. My MXP230 is actually pretty good in terms of vibration. So that footage didn't have, at least when I looked on the screen here, I couldn't see much in the way of jello. So as long as your quad is balanced or your aircraft is balanced, I think you're going to get reasonably good results out of that camera. It's, it's not going to be a PZ0240, whatever it is, 2040, you know, 600 TV line Sony killer. It's certainly not that, but you know, I mean, let's face it. If you take the price of the, of the video transmitter out, it's like a two or three dollar camera. So yeah, brilliant. Anyway, I'm going to uh, use those on some really cheap stuff that I can afford to lose and break. And I might order another one. So there you go, yeah. It gets an RC model reviews, thumbs up. And not many products do, so there you go. Rush out and buy one if you want one. And if you've got any questions, comments, whatever, put them on the bottom of this video. As usual, I'll do my best to answer them. And yes, I am working hard on the UHF systems review, but hey, it was such a lovely day today. And look, I've got a t-shirt. It's, it's late autumn and I've got a t-shirt on. Uh, I couldn't resist going out and giving this a fly. Thanks for watching. Time for me to get back to the bench.